The just shall live by what? Uh-uh. Talk. Now listen, come on. Now we don't have that a little time. We got to get it quick. The just shall live by what? All right. We are to walk by what? Faith. We are to be strong in what? Faith. We are saved by grace through what? We are saved by grace through what? Faith. Come on. So our faith is important. And I've been teaching about how in this life, if you are going to have a good life, a productive life, God has already made the way for you to prosper and be in health. He's already given us the answer to every situation in life. His name is who? Jesus. Come on, talk to me. His name is who? Jesus. All right. Now, don't forget, it's a whole media audience listening, and they need to hear us solid in some of these principles so I can move forward with what we need to do. I want y'all to understand and know my heart that when I get through here and I start talking about work, there is no work that you can do to be saved because Jesus has done it all. Amen? 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 Amen. But what happens is that once we are saved, we grow and we mature and we develop in our faith. So what happens is that the more that God places within us, the more comes out of us. Amen? Yes, yes, Some of y'all still with me? Yes, yes, All right, now listen. The way I know that you got it is that you got to respond back to me if I can notice that you got it so I can go to the next point. Amen. And I'm at this point, bring it on 60, almost 61. And what happens is that it's important to me to know that you're just, just coming to church just to say you went to church. Listen to good when I say this. And get your pen and paper, write this down. Write this down for me. Hang on, Florence. Write this down for me. Please be clear. This should have been my title, y'all, brother Joe. It's time for a change. It's time for a change. What you talking about, preacher? I, I'm going to let the Holy Ghost tell you what part he's talking to you about. I'm just supposed to tell you that part of the message today is letting you know, listen, God has so many blessings, wonderful blessings. He's already did so many things already. Yes, but what happens is that sometimes we don't capitalize on what God has already done because we are still doing things the way we used to do things. All right, now. All right. I'm yes. preaching what God acknowledges it or not. Oh, yes. You're doing what you were told to do, and even if what you were told to do is wrong, you're still holding on to what's not working. And even though it's not working, you're trying to hang on to it, but it's not getting the results that you need. How many people in here, show me your hands. How many people in here, you want some results in your life? Raise your hand. Everybody in here. You want things different. Yes, sir. You want to see God's glory manifested in your life. You want to be a light sitting on the hill so that people can see Jesus in you and me. Amen? Amen. But what happens is that sometimes we just don't cooperate with God. It starts off with simple things. And I'm telling you, one of the principles I'm going to get to has to deal with us allowing ourselves to be defiled by certain things. You know, if you start doing a little bit of wrong after a while, you say, oh, that's not that big of a deal. You make a big deal about nothing. But you start compromising your integrity with God. You start compromising your ability to really hear God's voice because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Yes, sir. The truth. Yes, sir. The people will do that in their marriage. They will come up with reasons. They'll hold on to some unforgiveness and they'll justify it. And what happens is that little by little, they'll get to the point where they think they are right on everything and everybody else is wrong. You don't have to say me, and I, I know I'm telling the truth. Even in church, people will decide. Pastor don't know what he's talking about, child. Anybody with child boy boots like that, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, he when he's supposed to be no cat. He jumped up in there. And you justify little ways to discredit the Holy Spirit voice in 
in your life, and then you get to the point where you lose out on what God wants you to have. Amen. It's time to change. Say that back to me. It's time to change. It's time to change. Where God showed you in his word today that you need to change. I want you to make a change. You know, I, I thought about little things that we hold as important that set the principles in our lives. Like for me, I always wanted for my children to be at school on time. I got that from my mother mainly because she was a school teacher. You had a certain time to get up, and she told you one time to get up. One time. And if you didn't get up, you remembered it for the rest of your life. Because she would come through there with some lightning bolts. And when you heard, you didn't have to hit no alarm clock. When you heard, it's time to get up. You know what you did? You just got up. You put it in here, and you did everything you needed to do because you knew she meant business. So what happened is that that got ingrained in me as a principle. And what I realized is that God wants to ingrain principles in us as well. Little things, because once you learn little things, then you get to some of the big things that we really want. Are y'all listening to me today? All right. Let's do, go to Ephesians 6. You saved, I hope so. If you're not, it's time to change. It's time to get saved today. How do you get saved? You turn into Ephesians chapter 6. But you're going to quote with me. John 3, 16 says what? For God so loved the world that he gave son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting, say everlasting life. I heard me talking about it when I was walking out is that he was talking about how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And what happens is that some people try to come up even with salvation. Sister Kim, they try to come up with their own way of doing things. We don't take all of that. Any other way to get to God. And so they come up with ways and they deceive themselves. And then when they get to points in life, then they get to the point where it looks like God is not doing this and look like God is not doing that. I don't understand. I'm doing all of this and God is not doing this because they have compromised their relationship with God. And now it's Tainted and they can't really hear God like they need to. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So it's so important for you to make sure that you hear and learn to hear the voice of God. It's important that you learn and trust. Whoever your pastor is, if you can't trust that pastor, get you one you can trust. Amen. It's me too. If you don't trust me, get you somewhere where you can hear God's voice. Yes, right. But if you can't hear me, something wrong with you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So listen. Ephesians chapter 6. Realize that once we're saved, you have eternal life. Once you are saved, you have heaven already secured. But how are you going to live in the meantime? Are you going to be saved and hateful? Saved and don't trust anybody? Saved, but you're miserable on the inside? Saved, but you broke? Saved, but you're unhappy? And y'all look at me like y'all don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes I talk to Christians that are saved, they're on their way to heaven. But they're so miserable in the process. Something's wrong. Ephesians chapter 6. Are you there? Amen. Okay, now listen to that because I got to read it quickly. Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to start out at verse number 10. Now I want to warn you. Look at me when I warn you. Look at me when I say this. Many of you have heard this passage before. And when you come to passages that you have heard before, there's a tendency for you to just blink out. Listen, I already know this. I already know what he's finna say. You don't know what I'm finna say. I say, you don't know what I'm finna say. 
Yes, you've heard it before, but I want you to listen at what I believe the Lord wants me to tell you. Because there's several principles that I'm supposed to drill in you today. But as a surgeon, I would flip you down the middle of your chest. And I would put this into your inner man. Listen at these principles. When I get to them, I want you to say them back. When I, I'm going to know you with me because when I stop and point to you, you're going to say that word. Are you ready? No, you're not ready because you're not answering. Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't hear you. I don't hear you. If I point to you, you're supposed to say the word I said. Are you ready? One more time. I don't hear you. Are you ready? Ephesians 6, verse number 10. It says, Find my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now, I want to stop right there and put this in there. He's not talking to sinners because the church at Ephesus, he's talking to the believers. Brethren. Are y'all here listening to me? He said, yes. All right. He says, Find my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. Say it back to me. Say, I trust in God. Come on, talk to me. Say, I trust in God. Say, I'm depending on him. All right. Now get ready because I'm going to point to you on this next verse. Put on the whole armor of God. Say it. Whole armor. Say, whole armor. Now, I don't want you to get sidetracked by all of the different pieces of the armor. As much as I want you to hold on to the what kind of armor? Whole armor. That's it. That's it. Say whole armor. Whole armor. I love it. I love it when the ladies are getting, getting excited about whatever they're doing. Yesterday I was at a funeral and I was preaching, preaching, preaching salvation and I walked them through salvation. I said, now, is anybody in here? You, you prayed that prayer for the first time, you saved it. And all the ducks looking at me, just, just piercing me. And two babies raised their hands. They did. I say, yeah, I know I got them when the baby's listening. When the baby's able to follow instructions, I know them old heads know it. The whole armor of God. Say it. All right, now watch. I know you've heard it before, but listen to this. That you may be able, no, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the what? Hold on. Now, I'm saying it again because in life, you and I have to learn spiritually. You've got to learn how to fight the good fight of what? Thank you. But what are you fighting for? You're not fighting to be saved. Jesus has already done it. And Jesus has accomplished everything for us already. But you've got to maintain the ground that you have already obtained from him. 